Well, should Ukrainians be more grateful for the military assistance they're receiving from Western nations? That was the clear message from British Defence Minister Ben uh, Wallace uh, when he met with the Ukrainian president at a NATO alliance meeting earlier this week. Wallace said he arrived in Kiev and was immediately handed with a list. I said to the Ukrainians last year, when I drove 11 hours to Kiev, only to be given a list, I said, I'm not Amazon. He went on to say, there's a slight word of caution here, which is that whether we like it or not, people want to see gratitude. My counsel to the Ukrainians, he said, is you're persuading countries to give up their own stocks. And yes, the war is a noble war. And yes, we see it as you doing a war, not just for yourself, but for our freedoms. But sometimes you've got to persuade lawmakers on the hill in America. You've got to persuade doubting politicians in other countries that it's worth it and it's worthwhile and they're getting something for it. Whether you like it or not, that's just the reality of it. Well, I can well understand Mr Wallace's frustration. There's nothing worse than saving a dying man only for the dying man not to be grateful. I well remember, Liz, a while back, I was rescuing a guy in the surf and I couldn't believe it. He's using all his energy to gasp for breath rather than showering me with praise, <laughs> telling me what a wonderfully generous, charitable person I was. It's right. true that the West have supplied a lot, billions of dollars, to Ukraine, but it's also true. Back in 1994, Ukraine were the third nuclear power in the world, but they gave up their nuclear weapons with assurances from America and the UK, Mr Wallace, that their security would be guaranteed. And so now, when they're attacked by the Russians, the people they gave those nuclear weapons back to after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the UK are doing what they said they would do and complaining they're not getting thanks and gratitude for it. On this point, just quickly... I, I agree with Anthony Albanese. I've got to quote him from The Australian today. Anthony Albanese said, I'm not critical of the Ukrainians for having a shopping list. They would always like more. There's a war for their survival as a sovereign state, after all. Well, I don't think we can really make the argument about nukes because that would be to suggest that if Ukraine hadn't done that, now it would have nukes to deploy. Well, they Nobody wouldn't have been invaded if they had nukes. A nuclear war right now. Well, we don't know that for sure. Sure, oh, they wouldn't have been. Made in, a difference. They wouldn't have been in, uh, invaded if NATO hadn't kicked the bear. But as far as I'm concerned, the lack of thanks that is being picked up on not just by Wallace because it's it's visible. We see this man in many of the Western nations around the world holding out tear-stained letters, begging for more and more. And They're more fighting money. for their lives. Quite constantly. But for me, this is simply watching Zelensky expect of NATO what I imagine they would have promised him when NATO kicked this whole thing off. We know, although I know you don't agree, I believe that is what kicked this conflict off. And people want to say, oh, no, it wasn't that. OK, what was it? Did the Kremlin literally just wake up one morning, lose its mind and randomly say... Now, let's press the button, let's go to war with well, Ukraine. Putin does want that to is simply the USSR. not the case. And that is why NATO keeps unquestioningly fueling this thing because they know they're responsible, they know the promises that were made. And Zelensky's not all that like, thank you, thank you, because this was the deal, this was the exchange. And the US is more than happy to do it, despite almost bankrupting their own country a matter of weeks ago, still sending tens of billions of dollars to Ukraine because it is protecting its own interests. But, but what really gets my goat is the fact that we're sending our resources. We are not a NATO state. The West seems to just be swallowing hook, like, line and sinker, this one-liner of, like, well, freedom and fighting for democracy there is fighting for our democracy here. Do you want to unpack that for me? Because it makes absolutely no sense. Neither does it make any sense that our Prime Minister is at the NATO summit. It's in the name, North Atlantic. Are we in the Northern Hemisphere? No. Do we touch the Atlantic Ocean? No. But you would seem to prefer, Liz, that Russia went and took back Ukraine and we go, oh, that, that's fine, we, we'll just let... Uh, not dictatorial... our circus, not our monkeys, and if you haven't noticed, come we've got on. our own problems come in our on. own patch. Do you really think, I think what happens on the other side of the world does not affect us? It's just a, Do you we, have just totally any cut idea off how many conflicts have broken out in your short lifetime and certainly in your longer lifetime that NATO didn't give a flying rip about? 
So maybe ask yourself, why does it have this massive vested interest to the tune of all these munitions and billions of dollars? Why have BlackRock and JP Morgan already opened a billion dollar reconstruction bank of Ukraine? Connect the dots. But perhaps nobody says it better than this ex-military guy who wrote into the Canberra Times this week. I can see these two laughing at me in the in the court, <laughs> in my peripheral vision. That is why I we laugh. Love the we love the passion. Oh well good. Well there's plenty where that came from. <laughs> Ian Janaway read that we've now given our U Butte Australian surveillance plane to Ukraine and he wrote in, he's from Monash, he says, being ex-military, I recognise Mission Creep when I see it. The government has announced it is sending an RAF surveillance plane to Europe, though it will not deploy over Ukraine. First we send money, then arms, then military trainers, now we send an aircraft. We are not part of Europe's defence network. That's why they have NATO. We have the Australian Defence Force. Europe has all the resources needed for this war. We do not. We will get sucked into an unwinnable war again. There is talk about NATO being expanded to our region to counteract the threat of China. That is Madness. Ian Janaway, are you single, mate? Because I feel like we'd get along really well. Here we go. The, Finally, the, someone the, talking sense. Well, he makes no sense because, as he oh, points please. out, Australia on our own cannot defend our continent. So we right. are reliant upon partners throughout the world right. in the event that an aggressive China makes a move and on we Taiwan. Have partners and so we are. Orcus. Oh, yes. And that rep, there's a reciprocal. What's the word I'm looking for? Reciprocal. Reciprocal. Thank you. There's a reciprocality that is required in these relationships. No, and so we are doing the right thing by supporting Orcus, a sure. sovereign nation in Europe in the event that our sovereignty is later affected and they'll repay in kind. It makes perfect sense, Kayla. I, I, I do agree. I oh, well, let's happens. just wade into every conflict everywhere then. We're not Store up favours all over the globe. That is ridiculous we're not, logic. We're not